Recently, I received an email from an artist asking if I could help design a circuit that would trigger sound effects, music, and mechanical animations when people approached his installation. The requirement is it has to be inexpensive and small. There are many ways we can solve this problem, but perhaps the easiest would be to use a passive infrared sensor. This device detects infrared radiation emitted by warm objects. You can find PIR sensors all over the place. They're in security systems, cameras, automatic light switches, and even those toilets that like to flush when you're still on them. Many PIR devices are a three-terminal device with two pyroelectric pixels behind an infrared filter. The pixels generate a small charge only when their temperature changes and are buffered by an internal transistor. They're configured in series with opposite polarity so the charges will cancel if both change temperature in the same direction. This is a very convenient feature because the sensor will automatically adjust to background and slow changes in temperature. This is a typical source follower configuration using the sensor's internal transistor. The signal will be present at the source which is pulled towards ground with a resistor. Some devices require a current limiting resistor on the drain. The gate is internally biased such that the signal will swing somewhere mid-range between VDD and ground. Temperature changes on single pixels will cause the bias to move up and down. Because the signal from the sensor is very small, in the millivolt range, several amplification stages will be needed to reach usable levels. In all the demos, I'll be using the LM324 from National. It's a single power rail op amp. The LT1006 from Linear Technology would be a good choice also. In this LT SPI simulation, I've set up a signal source to the left to emulate the voltage swing and waveforms one might encounter under normal PIR operations. The signal is low pass filtered with a resistor and capacitor network to reject high frequencies above 10 Hz. This reduces noise that may not represent motion in the room. The low pass filtered signal is then amplified by a non inverting op amp configuration. The feedback network high passes the filter signal above 0.16 Hz with the 4.7 microfarad cap to ground. This filtering removes slow background temperature changes in the room. The signal is now filtered for motion detection, but the voltage swing is still quite small, as can be seen in the waveform plots. So we'll capacitively couple the signal to an inverting op amp stage that will bring its level closer to the power rails. Now that the simulation looks good, let's actually build the circuit and see if it works. To the right of the screen is the PIR sensor. The bottom trace is the signal from the PIR sensor. The second one is after the filtering in the first gain stage, and then the top is the last gain stage. You can see the waveform move around when I put my hand in front of the sensor. They tend to be fairly slow to recover when there are sudden changes. This can actually be an advantage if you want to trigger things without a lot of debouncing circuitry. Okay, for the musical portion of this project, I chose the MSP430 Launchpad Development Kit from Texas Instruments. It comes with two low-cost 14-pin microcontrollers, one of which has a sample and hold analog-to-digital converter that I can use to read the analog values from the PIR sensor amplifiers. I'll be converting these values into MIDI note commands and transmitting them serially to a Casio keyboard. To generate the correct MIDI serial timing, you'll need to install the watch crystal that's supplied with the Launchpad Kit. This stabilizes the microcontroller's digitally controlled oscillator. The signal from the op amp is coupled to the analog pin of the microcontroller through a potentiometer and a resistor divider to allow for threshold adjustments. MIDI serial communication uses a current loop signaling scheme, which drives an opto-isolator at the receiving end of the bus. This prevents ground loops which might affect audio quality and improves transmission over long cable runs. A current limiting resistor is needed for the opto-isolator LED return line. This is my main software loop. I adapted the timer-based serial UART in the polled analog to digital conversion example from TI's website. First I start the conversion and wait for the status bit to indicate the conversion is complete. Then the 10-bit sample is shifted and limited to a valid MIDI note range. The note is then tested and a delay loop is started depending on how high the note is. Shorter delay for higher notes. If the note is not new, a new conversion is started. If it is new, then a note off command is sent for the old note and a note on is sent for the new note. Serial communication is processed under the interrupt service routine and use timer A to calculate the bit periods. I've also made a variant of this that plays multiple notes at once. To the left of the oscilloscope is the launch pad and the analog board and to the right is the PIR sensor. All the music you've heard in this video is generated real-time from me dancing around in front of this PIR sensor.
We could easily use the microcontroller to trigger animations, but since we have two spare op amps in the LM324, I'd like to show an analog way to do this. We can configure the op amps in an open loop to make a windowed comparator. Two resistor dividers are used to set the upper and lower trigger thresholds. The outputs are tied together by two diodes and then pulled towards ground with a resistor. When the inputs fall within the set window, the output is driven high, otherwise it will be pulled low. The signal could be used to drive transistors for motors, solenoids, and lamps. If we remove the diodes, we can use the two outputs like an H-bridge and drive a very small gear-reduced motor. PIR sensors output swing positive or negative depending on the direction they are passed laterally. This will cause the motor to fall in my hand. Fresnel lenses are commonly used to expand the viewing angle and distance of PIR sensors. Many have an array that will target areas in the room. I discovered this little trick of taping a beam spreading lens to a laser pointer to determine the sensitive spots in front of a sensor. If you'd like to build or join a discussion about this project, please visit elman14.com and search for Jerry Ellsworth. Remember, it's a Jerry with an I, not with a Y. You'll find my current projects, schematics and eagle, links to build and materials. I'll also be taking suggestions about upcoming projects there too. To be honest, I didn't know until recently that Element 14 has very good prices on parts, so be sure to click on the little store button on the upper left of their webpage.